to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator along with my colleague John North and we're going to focus on City Council yet again this morning. The primary coming up. We have a couple of candidates to introduce you to. But first, let's take a look at this map. I want you to focus on District 2. You see it goes way out west there and that is our focus this morning. Now, right now in this primary, only people who live in that district will be able to vote for these two candidates. But you need to pay close attention because in the city election in November, you will get an opportunity to vote for either of these candidates. So let you let you know who they are. And there is Councilman Andrew Roberto. He is the incumbent in District 2 and his challenger is Kim Smith. We welcome both of you. Ms. Smith, let's talk to you first about why you're running and what qualifies you for the council post. Sure. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I've been married and uh, living in the Knoxville area now for uh, 34 years. My husband and I have raised our two children in the Bearden area. They are both graduates from West High School and UT Knoxville. And I have a heart for public service. I've served on various nonprofit executive boards. I currently work in private education where I'm a teacher, financial officer, and I serve on the school board at New Hope Christian School. Um, I feel like this makes me qualified to uh, certainly um, bring uh, experience with fiscal conservative knowledge to our city budget and I firmly believe that our tax revenue should be spent wisely and focused on our city residents and uh, you know Knoxville's a great place to live and I'm dedicated to bring in common sense government and good values to our local government. Councilman Roberto why you're running for another term. Thanks John thanks for having me you know um, I'm running because experience matters um, I've I was selected by the second district residents as well as the city as a whole to represent um, the city on on council and they hired me to do that job and so once once I got hired I got to work right away got to work figured out how to how to do the job how to be an effective member of council and the people of Knoxville know me they know my record I've worked really hard to connect citizens with the services they need I've been a neighborhood advocate. I've worked really hard to make sure that we're on sound um, financial footing. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, serving for another four years. Panelists or candidates, I should say, Mr. Roberto and Ms. Smith, let's start off talking about the police department and KPD operations. As you both know, they've been in the news with some questions raised about how KPD has gone about its business, whether there may be a problem in the culture or a problem with perhaps racism. Uh, Andrew, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on if KPD is doing what it needs to do or if the chief needs to be addressing some issues she's failing to address? Well, I think the first thing we have to look at is that currently we have 416 authorized spots for officers, but there's only 364. Of those, 24 have uh, already signaled that they're going to retire and another 30 could at any time. So what we really need to do is focus on retention, but also recruitment. And that's certainly been something I've been pushing for for the past uh, four years and will continue to do so. If we can be fully staffed, then we can get back to doing community policing, which I think is the most effective way to protect our neighborhoods and our, uh, our community as a whole. Um, with regard to what's going on and some of the things in the media recently, I'd say that there's absolutely no room for either sexism or racism at KPD. And I'm deeply supportive of our officers, but I'm disappointed in the leadership that we've seen from the department. And I think more needs to be done to address the culture issues, because at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable in, in your job uh, with reporting something that you're seeing that's wrong, you're not going to want to stay there. And that's going to affect retention and recruitment, which I think is the number one issue we need to deal with. Before we turn to Ms. Smith, just to follow up, Mr. Roberto, uh, do you have full confidence in the police chief, Eve Thomas, or do you think she should step down? My confidence in the chief is based on how promptly she deals with the culture issue and creates a positive work environment for our, our officers. Ms. Smith, your answer to that question, and then feel free to go more in depth about the question John posed. Yeah, you know, the understaffing um, is a big problem. People are leaving. Uh, much faster than they're being recruited. Um, you know, there's 
years ago, there were 3,000 applicants um, and now in the, in the cadet program, and now there's less than 200. Um, recruiting maybe 35 people per class uh, is what's coming out. There's really no incentive to stay, and we all agree that public safety is a huge issue. We need to feel safe in our communities. We need to support our frontline workers. We need to address uh, the compensation issues. They've not had a considerable uh, raise in many years, um, other than cost of living. Uh, they spend a lot of equipment, or the, the, right now the government, or the city government is spending a lot on equipment and not so much on the manpower. So we really need to focus on our frontline workers and the job they do and making sure they're supported. Well, let's drill down on that pay issue because that's something we've heard about in a lot of conversations we've had recently regarding officers in our community. Uh, paying $10,000 more are jobs that are outside of Knoxville. Um, Ms. Smith, if you wanted to see salaries inc increase, say, $20,000, um, mm -hmm. where do you get the money? Well, th there's several places that reallocation can take place. Um, I don't believe that the officers that I have spoken with are in favor of relocating their headquarters because they spend such little time there. They come in, check in, and you know they start their shift in, in 10 minutes. So that's certainly an area that we could look at. Um, and then another thing too that uh, bothers me about the current budget is the electric buses. And I, you know, right now we need to focus on uh, meeting the current needs of our people and certainly buses are essential but when i see a bus i only see a few people on it and if we're going to invest so much money in electric buses then we need to focus on recruiting new bus riders so is the another. is the electric buses expenditure enough to make much of a difference in terms of trying to shift money where you want it to go yes yes i believe it is councilman roberto your answer to that question about salaries in particular for officers well, the current budget um, allows for fully funding the 416 officers that we're allowed to have um, right now. And um, if you were to, you know, the expense that we have right now as well is that we deal with overtime. And that's more expensive um, to deal with than if we had salary. The issue is not about money in the budget. The budget fully funds 416 officers. What we need to do is increase recruitment and retention. And I think if you deal with having a positive work environment, that will definitely help with retention. But then we could also look at a, a recruitment bonus, a retention bonus, I think would be a really good idea. Um, but we need to get out there and, uh, and have uh, more recruitment um, be a big, big focus for us. We're gonna take a quick break on Intent Tennessee. More with our candidates here in District 2. We'll talk to them about the stadium plan and also KUB when we come back.